Have you ever wondered why the Franklin's Demise perk is called like that? Well, it's actually a spoiler of the original film. So if you have never watched the original film or games from which each license is based off, don't worry, as today I will showcase every single perk origin in Dead by Daylight. So, hey ladies, buckle up. And since I mentioned Franklin's Demise, let's start with Leatherface. This perk is called like this because it literally references Franklin's Demise, a character from the original Leatherface film, with the perk quote being his last words. Sally, I hear something. Stop! Stop! In this scene, which I cannot show or else I won't be able to pay my rent, Booba chainsaws Franklin, making him drop his flashlight to the ground, which is exactly the item shown in the perk icon. BBQ and Chili's effect is completely made up for Dead by Daylight, but the name is a reference to the business the Sawyer family has, as they capture humans in order to sell their meat into barbecues and chilies. The quote from this perk is taken from the words of the cook in the dinner scene. I, I just can't take no pleasure in killing. <laughs> just some things you gotta do. Don't mean you have to like it. What's interesting is that the cook from the other game is a tracker, and this perk is also a tracking perk, so maybe there is something that I am not seeing. And finally, Knockout, which I believe is a direct reference to the very first victim of Leatherface, where he one-shots a survivor entering the house with a basic attack, making them unable to scream for help, which is reflected in the perk as their aura being hidden, making it hard to find the slugged survivor. However, the quote from the perk comes from the Hitchhiker, which is a completely different scene, where he says, Oh, that, that, that gun's no good. I was in there once with my uncle. No way. With a sledge. <laughs> See, that was better. They died better that way. Now, let's talk about Laurie Strode and her perks, starting with Object of Obsession, my favorite perk reference, because funnily enough, the perk makes significantly more sense in its reward state rather than in the past. Object of Obsession will reveal both your aura to the killer as well as the killer's aura to you, so you will be able to see each other for 3 seconds no matter where you are on the map. And this effect is exactly what happens various times in the original Halloween film, as Laurie Strode randomly finds Michael Myers stalking her through the movie for some seconds only to disappear after. In fact, the quote of this perk, which is Lori saying, Saw somebody standing in Mr. Riddle's backyard. Probably Mr. Riddle is watching me. Mr. Riddle is watching you? Lori, Mr. Riddle is 87. She is talking about that iconic scene where Myers is stalking her from the backyard. I think the reward effect of the perk is perfect for what it represents. Another perk from hers is Decisive Strike, which allows you to stab the killer with whatever you find in order to escape them. Well, that's exactly what she does in the movie. I originally thought it was a reference to the closet stabbing scene, but because of the quote of the perk, it's referring to that scene where she stabs Michael in the neck with a pin, stunning him for a while, and afterwards she says the quote. I'm scared. There's nothing to be scared of. And finally, Soul Survivor, which as the name implies, is what happened to Lori after the first film, as she was the last person that Myers wanted to sacrifice. In fact, the quote from this perk is the last phrase Laurie says in the ending of the film. What's the boogeyman? As of the effects of this perk, I guess this is the best way to represent a final girl, becoming more powerful as the movie progresses. As for Michael Myers, sadly his perks are not as special as Laurie's, as they all follow the same concept, leave your obsession for last, and get bonuses by ignoring them, like faster cooldowns, faster speed, or bother survivors. The only cool comment I can make is that Dying Light, in a way, makes the obsession stronger, so it's like being the protagonist of a horror movie with plot armor. The only movie references come in the form of the quotes, as they are phrases said by Dr. Loomis, which save the best for last being Death has come to your little town, Sheriff and Dying Light being This isn't a man. I have talked about this in the past, but the quote used for play with your food actually comes from a cut scene of the film where Dr. Loomis talks with young Michael Myers. You fooled him, haven't you, Mike? 
but not me. This doesn't appear in the original film, so it's an interesting choice made by the devs. Let's talk about William Bill Overbeck, and surprisingly, his perks are very faithful references to the original Death for Dead game, starting with Unbreakable. Funnily enough, the effect of the perk in DVD, which is to stand from the ground by yourself, is something you cannot do in Left 4 Dead, as you need your teammates to revive you, but the perk name is a direct reference to an achievement in that game, where you get it by finishing the campaign without ever being healed. The quote from this perk is something Bill can say when he is in a critical state. God damn it, I am seriously FUBAR! Borrow Time is an even more interesting perk, especially the original design, as it gave a temporal health state to the survivors, making their screen go grey. This is a direct reference to when you are in your final incapacitation, as your screen becomes grey, indicating that if you don't heal yourself, you will die. In a way, it's interesting to think that the mending status effect was inspired by this mechanic from Death for Dead. The quote from this perk is something that Bill says to his teammates after reviving them. Probably stings like hell, but they ain't gonna kill you. Up and at him, soldier. Time to move. And finally, Left Behind, which is the canon fate that Bill has in the Left 4 Dead games and comic. Last spoiler warning, but basically, Bill sacrifices himself in order to save his teammates, Zoe, Louis, and Francis. In Dead by Daylight, however, the effect is completely the opposite, as it gives you a benefit if you are the only one alive. I guess it's more balanced than giving survivors a repair boost every time you're hooked, and again, the quote is something Bill says while sacrificing himself. Nobody try to help me, I'm doing this alone. I'm not horseshitting around. However, for some reason, the one in DVD is a combination of two different phrases. As to why Behavior did this, I don't know, but it's not the only one like that. Now let's go over to Freddy Krueger and start with Blood Warden. No, the entity doesn't appear in the remake movie. Instead, this perk, which blocks the exit gates at the end of the game, is a reference to how Freddy Krueger can trap his victims inside his dreams and the quote is taken from a scene that does this exact thing. You can't hurt me. You're in my world. And you can't ever leave. His best perk in terms of movie reference is, in my opinion, Remember Me. The name of the perk is something Freddy Krueger says in the film in order to tease his victims. Remember me? But the quote of the perk comes from when he's teasing Chris, another one of his victims, in one of the most disgusting scenes in the film. You don't remember. You must. You're my number one. However, what is interesting is that the quote in DVD is not the exact thing he says in the film. And finally, we have Fire Up, a perk that makes you stronger the more generators are repaired. This is not a direct reference to anything in the film in particular, but it's a good representation of Freddy Krueger's mood throughout the movie, as in the start, he was cocky and teasing everyone, but the more he started losing control, the more fired up he got, to the point he insults Quentin Smith like he does in the quote of this perk. Now why don't you just fucking die? Now as for Freddy's counterpart, Quentin Smith, his perks have a lot more variety, starting with Wake Up, which is something he says in the film a lot. Wake up, Nancy! In Dead by Daylight, these perks makes him open doors faster, as well as reveal them to other survivors. Maybe it's a representation of how waking up makes you escape from the nightmare, but honestly, I don't know. The quote from the perk comes from another part of the movie where he flirts with Nancy. Okay, look, if we survive the next 20 then I'll take you out on a real day. Pharmacy is another Quentin perk that makes him find a green medkit while searching in chests, as well as it makes him search them faster. This is where the quote from the perk comes from. Just walk on the nurse's cart. And finally, we have Vigil, a perk that helps you and your teammates you have close to remove their status effect faster. Vigil means being awake during a period of time of having to be asleep, like during the night. And this is exactly what Quentin does in order to look out for Nancy. 
The quote is the reassurance he gives to Nancy around the end of the movie. The pig has some really cool perk references, but Hangman's trick is not one of them. In fact, this perk is a travesty. Amanda is someone that in the Saw films, she makes her own inescapable traps inspired by Jigsaw, her mentor. So a perk that shows how she tinkers with the entity's hooks, which are her suffering tools, made a lot of sense in the past. But for some reason, the devs decided to rework Hangman's trick into a scourge hook with a very bad effect, instead of giving its old effect. Right now, it makes no sense whatsoever. At least the quote is cool, which are all taken from Saw 3 with the surgeon, where she tells her... No excuses, no equivocations, no crying. Surveillance is another perk that makes a lot of sense thematically with the pig, as it allows her to have more awareness of the events happening in the trials. Just like she surveilled the trials, she subjected her victims to in fact, in the Saw map, you can see plenty of cameras showing that she is indeed someone doing a lot of surveillance. The per quote comes from this scene. Are you gonna behave? And last but not least, we have Make Your Choice, which is by far one of the best, if not the best license perk ever made. Make Your Choice is one of the most iconic lines in the entire Saw saga. Make your choice. But the effects of the perk are absolutely amazing. It forces survivors to make a choice, whether to save the life of your teammates by rescuing off the hook but screaming and being exposed for 60 seconds, or ignore them until they eventually get taken by the entity. This perk is a masterpiece, and whoever designed it definitely deserves a lot of props. Now for Detective Tap, I believe he is very well represented in Dead by Daylight perk-wise, and let's start with Stakeout, because this perk references how obsessed Tap was with finding the real identity of the Jigsaw killer. In-game, this perk rewards you when you are close to the killer, but not while in a chase, just like how Tap was close to finding the identity of the killer, but never found out in the end. Show your knees. You're running. You're, you're running. You're running scared because we had you. We're going to close this case. And the best showcase of his obsession is in Detective's Hunch, as this perk icon is a reference to how obsessed Detective Tap was with finding the identity of Jigsaw, as you can see a TV and a bunch of photos in the walls, just like in this shot. As for the effect of the perk, it reveals auras of stuff after repairing a generator, just like a detective would search for every important piece of evidence. I wish this perk had an obsession mechanic instead, as it would have made this perk even cooler. Are you able to tell us where you were between the hours of 11 p.m. and 1 a.m. last night, Doctor? And by far the most fitting perk for Detective Tap is Tenacity, a perk that makes him crawl and regain his health faster while downed. Now, huge spoilers just in case, but basically, Detective Tap got very close to finding the identity of the Jigsaw Killer, only he got distracted one second, which allowed the killer to slash his throat. However, Tap doesn't die at this moment. Instead, he stands up despite his injury in order to follow the killer. The perk icon is a direct reference to this scene. Now, as many of you know, the ghost face we have in DVD is not from the Scream franchise, so there are no references to the films on his perks, right? Well, indeed, in the live version of the game, we don't have any perk references to the original Scream films. But if you are an expert at mean school videos, you would know that back in the day, in the accidental developer build league, Fortif Chase was originally called Simple Formula, which is a direct quote from a scene in the original Scream movie. There's a formula to it, a very simple formula. Everybody's a suspect. I guess the developers didn't want to risk it, or maybe it was a placeholder name. But hey, if you found this fact cool, you might as well help me with a like or a sub, I don't mind either way, and if this video gets enough, I will make another part showcasing how accurate each license is to their source. So, you know what to do if you are interested. Next up, Ash Williams, and to be fair, I am not very familiar with this franchise, but as far as I can tell, all perk effects are made up, so if you are familiar with the license, 
please let me know in the comments. The only things I can show you is the perk icon references and the quotes. For example, the icon from Flip Flop comes from this scene. But the perk name and quote comes from this other scene. Catch on the flip flop, good luck. Even though there is an iconic buckle up in one of the Army of Darkness movies, buckle up, bonehead, because you're going for a ride. The ash we have in the game is based on the show, so instead, buckle up gets its name from this scene. Okay, ladies, buckle up. And finally, Metal of Man which is the name of the final episode of Ash vs Evil Dead, as well as the last Ash Williams physical appearance ever, as Bruce Campbell said he wanted to retire. The perk icon you can basically see in-game, as it's his robot arm. Next up, we're going to tackle the Stranger Things perks, and yes, the perks are now general, but if you have the DLC, the perks will feature different icons, however the names are changed. For the purpose of this vid, I will refer to all of the perks by their original names. Sadly, all of the Demogorgon's perks go back to just being generic ones made with its powers in the show, instead of straight up references. And the main effect it has is how the Upside Down can damage and manipulate electronic devices in the real world, just like the Christmas lights that Joyce used to communicate with Will in Season 1, which is reflected in both Surge and Cruel Limits. Another power that Demo has in the show is telekinesis and telepathy, but it's barely shown, so that's where Mindbreaker comes from. The quotes from its perks are also written as reports by the Hawking's laboratory, and they are not part of the show. Now, unlike the Demogorgon, the survivors have a lot of personality in their perks, like Steve Harrington with Babysitter, a perk effect that is very fitting for someone who will fight for his friends, and the perk name is the nickname he gives himself after protecting the Stranger Things kids in season 2 of the show, with the iconic quote coming from this scene. I promise I keep your shithead safe and that's exactly what I plan on doing. The perk icon, however, is taken from another scene, right after he defends the kids from the demo dogs. They're going somewhere. Walkie talkies were a huge thing in the 80s, and they are used constantly all over the Stranger Things show so it explains pretty well why Camaraderie has that perk icon, which was unchanged after the DLC was delisted. The perk effect can be a showcase of how Steve will always try his best to stand up no matter how injured he is as long as he has his friends. And finally, Second Wind, which again follows the same principle. The perk quote comes from the same scene as the one in Babysitter, as he says that in response to the suggestion of setting the Demogorgon on fire. And last but not least, we have Nancy with Better Together, which is very fitting with her character. Now the effect is a little weird, and I wish Nancy had an aggressive perk like Laurie Strode, as she never backed down from any killer, but either way, her perk icon is not a reference to anything, and the perk quote comes from here. Let's burn that lab to the ground. Fixated, I think, has also no icon reference, but the perk quote at least comes from this scene. I want to finish what we started. I want to kill it. The perk's flavor text fits Nancy's character a lot. She is very determined in every single thing she does, especially in season 1 and 2. And finally, Inner Strength, which has the coolest icon as it's Nancy with her iconic red jacket. And it's interesting how both Stranger Things characters have paid cosmetics instead of their default cosmetics as perk icons. Her perk quote comes from this scene. All this time I've, I've been trying so hard to pretend like everything's fine. It's not. Now we finally reached the part that I didn't like while preparing for this video. From now on, a lot of characters will not have any cool references to show so it's taken up more to interpretation. In the case of Priamid Head, for example, none of the perk icons are related to Silent Hill in itself, and the perks have no quotes whatsoever. In fact, Pyramid Head was just a common enemy in Silent Hill, just like the Demogorgon is for Stranger Things, and just like his power, his perks are all custom made for Dead by Daylight. And the same can be applied to Cheryl Mason, but at the very least, 
one of her perk icons do reference the games. Soldard is taken from Silent Hill 3, where Cheryl finds the seal of Metatron, an artifact that is apparently the tool in order to stop the gods of Silent Hill. The rest of her perks, Blood Pact and Repressed Alliance, do not reference anything. But it's interesting how Repressed Alliance is the only perk in the entire game that allows survivors to call the help of the entity, showcasing Cheryl's strong psychic powers from Silent Hill. The Nemesis, just like Pyramid Head, has no references icon-wise, but at the very least it has perk quotes. And these are very interesting because he is the only character in the entire game that has perk quotes said by the survivor counterparts. In this case, Lethal Pursuer has this quote by Carlos Oliveira. Anything like it, but it's no zombie. It knows what it wants and won't stop till it gets it. Don't you like that in a man? No thanks. He's all yours. Hysteria has this quote by Kendo. Sorry, I got a little jumpy there. Didn't know quite what to expect. No shit. And finally, Eruption has this quote by Jill Valentine. I can use weapons. As of the perk references, the only one I can think of is the fact that Lethal Pursuer is exactly what Nemesis was, as he constantly knew the whereabouts of Jill through the entire game. And in fact, this Resident Evil starts straight to the point with Nemesis going after Jill, just like a Blight would rush to a survivor at the start of the match had they had Lethal Pursuer. Jill has various perk quotes, like the one in Blast Mine. Which is taken from this scene. Come on, you creepy ass stalker. You want stars? I'll give you stars. However, funnily enough, despite the perk being called Blast Mine and showing a mine in the icon, what you actually put on the gen and the effect of the perk is a flashbang. I assume the reason why they didn't name it like that is because of Leon's perk. Resurgence doesn't refer much icon wise, besides the fact that this is how Jill runs in Resident Evil 3 when she is injured. The perk quote refers to this scene. It's my turn, bitch. And finally, the perk counterforce doesn't reference anything in particular, but the perk quote comes from the final scene of the game. I don't mind a little detective work. For Leon's case, Bite the Bullet doesn't refer to anything in particular either. But the quote of the perk is actually one of the many lines Leon can say while in Resident Evil 2. The same happens with the quote of Flashbang. However, the perk effect is really cool, as it's a representation of how in the Resident Evil games you can craft items like flashbangs with gunpowder. So in a way, it's like having a crafting system incorporated in Dead by Daylight. And finally, Rookie Spirit, which is a very cool quote as it's the last words he says to his lieutenant. I'll stop this lieutenant. I promise. It's important to note that all of these perks are taken inspired on Resident Evil 2, where Leon is still a rookie police officer. Had they made Leon based on Resident Evil 4, we might have had a perk that will allow us to suplex the killers. Sadly, despite being a movie killer, None of the Cenobites perks are direct reference to the original movies, which is sad because I think there are various scenes they could have used for this. Despite that, all of the perk quotes come from the same scene and possibly one of the most iconic scenes from the film, which is the first appearance of the Cenobites, with plaything being... We came, now you must come with us, taste our pleasures. Gift of Pain being... And finally, Deadlock being... Nobody escapes us. But worry not, because the cool movie references come back with Sadako, who has one of the coolest movie references in Dead by Daylight. Her perk, Call of Brine, might look like something else for a lot of people, but it's by far one of the most iconic scenes in the original Ringu film, as it's also the scene that inspired the Memento Mori of Sadako. Merciless Storm's perk icon is a reference to Sadako coming out of the well, which is also in the same scene as the last icon. You can notice her weird stance, just like the one she has while walking around the map. And last, 
but in this case, the least, we have Flutes of Rage. Sadly, the perk icon is not a reference to anything besides the ocean theme that all of her perks have due to Sadako's backstory. There are no perk quotes either. Sadly, none of her perks make any sense or represent who Sadako is. As for Yoichi, Parental Guidance is my favorite one by far, and it's a reference to a scene in the film where child Yoichi looks at his father while it's raining. In the perk icon, they are closer than in the film. Dark Theory is a very weird perk, as it features Towel Man, one of the most mysterious characters in Ringu, and nobody knows who it is, as well as nobody knows why Dark Theory just gives you a speed boost inside a boon area, it makes no sense. And finally, Empathic Connection, that has no perk references whatsoever. This is because Yoichi as an adult does not exist in the Ringo films, so it's really cool how they decided to add Yoichi as a survivor instead of the father or the mother, which would have been because their likeness would cost a lot. We go back to no perk references nor any perk quotes. Albert Wesker has the most, with Terminus being a reference to this pose that he does. Rebecca and Ada Wong have the exact same problem. Besides Rebecca's thumbs up perk, none of them have any visual references or perk quotes, which is weird, because all of the other perks from the first Resident Evil DLC had perk quotes at the very least. But worry not, because the Alien DLC is here to save the day. All of the perks have quotes from the film, and by far the coolest one in my opinion is Alien Instinct, which is a perk that references the first ever jump scare of the film. With the perk quote being said by the man who got jump scared. Yes, uh, yeah, lights from my eyes only. But that's not all. This perk effect gives the oblivious status effect to the survivor that is injured and further away from you, as well as revealing their location to the xenomorph, which essentially allows you to perform a jump scare just like in the film. Out of all the xenomorph's perks, this is the only one that makes perfect sense and is a great reference to the film. The rest of the Xenomorph's perks have no perk icon references unless you count Ultimate Weapon as being the reference to the scene where he gets the Mori, but either way, the quote from Rapid Brutality is from this scene, Catch it, put it in the airlock. and the quote from Ultimate Weapon is from this other scene. I can't lie to you about your chances. And finally, Ellen Ripley, who has light footed, with this perk quote. Come on, cat. And this might be a reference to her love for Jonesy the cat, the only other survivor from the movie. Chemical Trap has no perk quotes nor any perk references, but at the very least, Lucky Star has a fantastic perk reference, and it's actually the reason I wanted to do this video in the first place. The name Lucky Star comes from a song by Madonna that Ellen Ripley sings at the end of the movie when she is about to eject the Xenomorph to the void. The perk quote is where the name of the perk comes from too. It's interesting because the perk name means that it's technically a reference to a copyrighted song. Well, those are all the perk references I was able to find. If you know any special references that I missed during my research, please let me know. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.